Hello everyone! Welcome here on my channel at pag-uusapan natin today ang tungkol sa solving problems involving permutation. So this is intended for grade 10 students. And that's a week 2 na tayo ng quarter 3. And by the way, I am Teacher V at gumagawa ako ng mga videos para tulungan ka na mas maintindihan mo yung mga lessons mo sa mathematics. At tutulungan din kitang lalong mahalin ang mathematics. So, our targets or learning competency for this video is to solve problems involving permutations. Napag-usapan natin last week yung iba't ibang klase ng permutations at mga examples nito. Ngayon, i-a-apply natin siya sa pagsusolve ng mga word problems. Bago yun, mag-review muna tayo ng tatlong klase ng permutations na na-introduce ko na actually sa isa ko pang video. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung video ko about sa different types of permutations, you can watch that first. Lalagay ko na lang sa ating description box yung link. Ngayon, ano-ano ang iba't ibang klase ng permutation? Okay, tama kayo. First is the linear permutation. It refers to the number of ordered arrangement of objects in a line. Okay, at ito ang mas kalimitan ginagamit na permutations. Ginagamitan din natin to ng FCP or Fundamental Counting Principle. Another is the distinguishable permutation. So different permutations of n objects when some of them are alike or the same. Kapag meron tayong objects na the same or identical, pareho, dun napapasok yung ating distinguishable permutation. Arrangement of objects na merong objects na the same or pareho. Now, for the third permutation natin, we have the circular permutation. And from the word circular, the arrangement is in a circle. So, yan yung iba't ibang klase ng permutation. Pero, syempre, isa-isahin lang muna natin yung mga problems related dito. First is yung linear permutation. So, the permutation of n objects taken r at a time. And this is our formula, n factorial over the difference of n and r factorial. This is our problem number one. If a committee has eight members, how many ways can the committee select a president, vice president, and a secretary? Okay, so sinasabi na ang ating committee ay may eight members. Ngayon, how many ways can they select a president, vice president, and a secretary? Now, what is our N and what is our R? Our N is the total number of elements and that is eight. And for our R, we have three. Kasi yung selection natin is president, vice president, and secretary. N is eight and R is three. Now, let's write our solution. So, this is our formula in our permutation. N is equal to eight and R is equal to three. Let us substitute N and R to our formula. Yung N natin is eight, so that's why... Pinalitan natin yung n ng 8. So, 8 factorial over 8 minus 3. So, this is our r, 3 factorial. Okay, then simplify. So, 8 minus 3 is 5 factorial. So, next na gagawin natin is we have to get the factorial of 8. So, pwedeng ganito na lang ang gawin natin para mas madali. So, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. Bakit ako huminto na lang sa 5 factorial? Kasi meron na tayong 5 factorial sa denominator. So, kung pwedeng stop na rin tayo dito kasi makakancel na rin naman sila. Right? So, cancel out na lang natin yung 5 factorial dito and 5 factorial sa baba. That's why we only have 8 times 7 times 6. So, 8 times 7 is 56 times 6. The answer is 336. Now, the answer is this. Therefore, there are 336 ways can the committee select a president, a vice president, and a secretary. Okay? Very easy, right? So, mahalaga na kailangan alam lang natin ang 
N and R. And always remember na yung N natin ay dapat na mas malaki sa ating R. Okay? At hindi sila dapat negative. Hmm. Next, example number two. How many ways can six different books be arranged on a shelf? Okay, so i-arrange natin yung ating anim na books sa shelf. So ano kaya ang gagamitin natin formula? Ang gagamitin natin dito is permutation of n objects taken all at a time. Okay, or n and n. Kasi ang given lang natin dito is yung six different books. Therefore, ito na yung ating n or all elements natin. n is equal to 6. So, no need na for r. At kapag ganito ang ating given, permutation of n objects taken all at a time, ang formula na gagamitin na lang natin is n factorial. Okay? So, we will get the factorial of 6 because our n is 6. So, 6 factorial is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Okay, this is times 1. <laughs> Nakalimutan lang isulat ni teacher V. Okay, so times 1. So, the answer is 720. Therefore, the 6 books can be arranged in 720 different ways. Okay? So, madali namang malalaman kung ang permutation natin is n objects taken all at a time. Kapag ka ganito, pagka isa lang yung nakikita ninyong given. ba? So, ito na lang ang gamitin natin formula n factorial. Next, paano naman ang distinguishable permutation? So, permutations with identical objects or mga same, pareho ng objects. This is our formula, n factorial over P factorial times Q factorial times R factorial and so on. So, depende kung ilan yung identical or same objects dito sa distinguishable permutation. So, let's see our example. Determine the number of distinguishable arrangements for the word Saskatoon. Ayan, Saskatoon. So, alamin daw natin yung kanyang uh, possible arrangement ng word Saskatoon. Ilan kaya? Makikita naman natin na merong identical elements or objects. Yung A, pareho dalawa. Yung S, dalawa din. And yung O is dalawa din. Okay? So, this is our formula. N factorial over P factorials, Q factorial, and R factorial, and so on. Ang N natin is 9. Why is it that we say that the N is 9? Bilangin lang natin yung letters dito sa word na Saskatoon. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So, that is why we have N. Tandaan nyo, ang N is the total elements natin. Okay? And, meron tayong P. Itong P na kukunin natin is yung mga identical or pareho object dito sa word na Saskatoon. Pero dito, ang parehong object is yung mga parehong letters. Okay? Dito, yung S. So, kaya 2 yung P natin kasi dalawa yung ating S. And then, yung Q, another identical objects natin or identical letters, same letters natin is A. So, dalawa yung ating A dito. So, that's why we put 2. At isa ulit, R, for another identical objects, and that is O. Dalawa yung ating O, kaya we write 2. R is equal to 2. Now, since we identify the N, P, Q, and R, we can now substitute this in our formula. So, N is 9. So, 9 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Okay, 9 factorial, so we will put 9 times 8 hanggang sa 1, makarating tayo sa 1. And then, tatlong 2 times 1, kasi tatlo rin ang ating factorial. At kung pwede nating makancel na yung 2 times 1 sa dulo, nitong 9 factorial, at isang 2 times 1. So therefore, i-multiply na lang natin hanggang dito sa 3, then 2 times 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. So, that is why we have 181,440. Saan nang galing ang 181,440? Nang galing siya rito sa 9 times 8 times 7 
hanggang dito sa times 3. And then, 2 times 2 is 4. So, i-divide lang natin yan, we can get 45,360. Therefore, there are 45,360 distinguishable arrangements in the word Saskatoon. Okay? So, depende yan kung ilan ang magiging identical objects sa ating given problem. So, dito, P, Q, and R kasi tatlo yung ating identical objects. So, kung in, if in case, meron pang isa or dalawa na identical objects, so, ganun lang din. Lagyan yun na lang or pwede nyo lagay na S factorial, P factorial, and so on. Okay? Now, let's move to the third kind of permutation and that is the circular permutation. Ito yung pinakamadali sa kanilang tatlo. So, ito, ang arrangement natin is in a circle. At ang formula lang naman natin dito is we will just subtract 1 from n. Okay? Then, factorial. So, let's see our example. So, find the number of ways in which 5 people... A, B, C, D, and E can be seated at a round table such that no restrictions are imposed. A and B always sit together. And letter C, A and B never sit together. So, tatlo yung hinihingi sa atin dito. No restrictions imposed. A and B always sit together. And then, A and B never sit together. So, paano ba natin gagawin yan? Okay. Of course, uh, our N is 5 kasi 5 yung people or yung tao na ayusin natin yung arrangement na, arrangement sa round table. So, 5 yung ating N. Kung no restrictions are imposed, punta mo tayo sa letter A. So, gamitin lang natin yung formula na N minus 1 then factorial. So, 5 is our N. So, 5 minus 1 is 4, then 4 factorial, so 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that is equal to 24. So therefore, if no restrictions are imposed, there are 24 ways in which 5 people can be seated at a round table. Okay, kung no restrictions imposed. Pero, paano kung sa pangalawa, A and B, or 2 people always sit together? Baka couple tong A and B, kaya kailangan magkasama sila. Paano naman natin to isusolve? Okay, so if we wish to seat A and B together in all arrangements, we can consider this two as one unit along with three others. So effectively, we have to arrange, we have to arrange four people in a circle. Okay, so dahil kailangang magkasama yung A and B, iti-treat natin si A and B as isa na lang. Alright? So isa na lang siya kasi kailangan lagi daw silang magkasama eh. Hindi isa na lang. So in best na 5, yung ating magiging N dito, magiging 4 yung ating N. Okay? Kasi yung A and B, isa na yon, Parang isang tao na yung A and B kasi magkasama sila. And then yung, yung C, D, and E, so tatlo pa yon. that's why we have 4. So, ang n na natin dito is 4. And then, i-minus lang natin. So, 4 minus 1, that is 3. Then, 3 factorial. So, that is equal to uh, 3 times 2 times 1. So, the answer is 6. So, na ba yung answer natin? Kasi ito yung nakuha natin sa 3 factorial. Okay. So, let's take a look. Uh, Mag-illustrate tayo para ma-visualize natin yung magiging arrangement nila. So, let's say ito, yung A and B, yeah, magkakatabi yung A and B. They sit together. So, anim, di ba yung nakumpit natin? But, in each of these arrangements, A and B can interchange places, which indicates that A and B can be seated in two ways. Totoo naman, di ba? Kasi po pwedeng uh, magkapalit sila, pero magkatabi pa rin naman. So, po pwede natin ngayong sabihin yung ganitong illustration. So, magkakatabi pa rin naman yung A and B, pero nag-interchange lang sila ng pwesto yung A and B. So, ngayon, ang tanong ko, ilan ang possible ways na uupo yung A and B nang magkasama? Six lang ba? 
Okay, tama ka, yun ang naiisip. Therefore, the total number of ways A and B always sit together will be 6 times 2 and that is equal to 12. Okay, so 12 yung um, ways na magkasama ang A and B sa ating round table. Okay, so kailangan talaga dito sa permutations, medyo pagaganahin natin yung logic natin or yung number sense natin. Kasi nga, may mga panglitong problem na akala mo yun ay yung sagot, uh, hindi pa pala. Parang sa love, kala mo siya na <laughs> hindi pala. Iwan ka rin pala sa huli. <laughs> My God. Okay. So, going back to our topic, para naman kung A and B never sit together. So, kung ito, hindi naman magtatabi yung A and B. So, anong gagawin natin? So, the number of ways in this case would be obtained by removing all those cases from the total possible in which A and B are together. So, ang gagawin lang natin, dahil na hindi pwedeng magtabi si A and B or yung dalawang tao na to, so yung 24, yung nakuha lang natin sa answer natin, di ba sa una, kapag uh, kinuha natin yung arrangement nila na no restrictions allowed, so 24 yung original talagang arrangement, minus lang natin doon sa 12, ito yung 12, nanggaling to doon sa A and B are together. Kasi nga, hindi nga sila pwedeng, uh, hindi nga magkasama ang A and B, never sit together. So, minus natin yung 12 natin, wherein A and B are together, doon sa total possible ways, which is 24. So, 24 minus 12, so that is 12. So, therefore, there are 12 ways in which A and B are not seated together. Okay? Ayan. Okay, so nakita ninyo yung iba't ibang ways kung paano natin gagamitin ang permutations sa pagsusolve ng mga word problems. So I hope na nakatulong ang video na to para mas lalo mong maget si mga topics niyo At marami pang mga examples sa inyong modules, subasahin ng mabuti at huwag mahiyang magtanong sa mga teachers ninyo. Okay? Kung meron ka namang gusto ng itanong kay Teacher B, pwede-pwede rin naman. Mas madali kong mababasa yan kung magpo-comment ka dito sa aking comment section. So, pwede mong ilagay yung mga tanong mo about permutations. Okay, so dito na muna matatapos yung video natin. Itutuloy naman natin sa susunod ko pang video para naman sa week 3. So, I hope na mag-enjoy kayo sa pag-aaral ninyo ng mathematics. See you again on my next video and don't forget to share this to your classmates and friends para sila rin naman ay matuto sa mathematics. Okay? So, goodbye!